Good evening. Welcome to Living Arts. I'm your host, Jackie Suarez. Thank you for tuning in. Tonight we're going to be talking to the Joe DeRay's band, and I'm very pleased to introduce you to Chris Perna, who plays the drums. We have Steve Geller, which is lead, lead guitar. Bass. Bass. Mr. Joe DeRay's, and Rodman Del Castillo, who is the lead guitar, right? Yes. So, guys, thank you for coming to the show. I appreciate, you know, you guys coming through. Thanks, Thanks for having us. us. Thank you, you. you played a little and got everybody really excited to see you locally, you know, at various events and stuff. I was actually familiar with your music through Kevin Winterfield. Yes. So he was on the show and he kind of gave me your CD, so I've been listening to that for a Kevin, while. Kevin's a great guy. He's, he's a gentleman and... Uh, he, a scholar. He mm. really is, and he's, 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 very, he's really into supporting the local arts in Peekskill mm -hmm. and supporting all the different musicians and artists and photographers and everything that Peekskill has to offer, and so he's, uh, he, he's a great guy, so we're, we're happy to have him as a, as a supporter. Absolutely, he speaks very highly of you. Mm. So why don't we give our audience first a little introduction into the band. So who do we have here with us? Rodman, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself? Um, originally born in Jamaica, Queens. Uh, started playing jazz and R&B when I was a little guy and then I heard Aerosmith on the radio and my life was changed forever. And I asked my mom to go out and buy me a Les Paul and she did and I've been rocking ever since and I did a lot of uh, local rock bands and then started touring with some uh, hardcore metal bands and stuff like oh, that. Oh, really? Like who? Planet Hate. We were signed to Energy <laughs> Records, and uh, it was pretty hardcore. <laughs> we mm -hmm. did a lot of good stuff, a lot of touring around the U.S., and then uh, I got picked up to do a tour with Tina Turner in 2000, and that was great. A lot of fun, good money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot of good people I met and um, made some connections. And Now he's in the Poe house. Did some now stuff. he's in, in the Poe house. <laughs> did some stuff in Europe, and then I came back and... Uh, I was on Long Island for a while, and I found Joe, and Joe found me, and it's been uh, bliss ever since. Okay, so do you live locally? I live in Long Island, Hempstead, Long Island right now. Oh, okay, so you're still living out there? I'm still back and forth and commuting and loving every minute of it. Okay, so when did you guys meet exactly? How many years ago? Uh, uh, more like how many months ago? Yeah, yeah. it was oh, long ago. Okay. We, 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 I assembled this band this year, earlier this year. Oh, okay, so when you pulled this album out, Ebb and Flow... Ebb and it Flow was, was released in November of 2013, so mm -hmm. it'll be a year this November. Okay. And um, right around January, I started uh, just looking for a band and, you know, started with Chris. And uh, a week later, we met Steve. And about two months later, it took a long time to find Rodman. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so you joined us like May or something, something like that. Something like that, yeah. So, uh, but we've been together since March. And uh, so, yeah, it's only been a few months. Okay, because you guys have a lot of, uh, I don't know, I guess a good vibe or a lot of energy between you all. You yep. so I thought lot. you'd love, you know, you, <laughs> you knew each other for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when did uh, Chris join? You were the first band member, right? Yeah, I, you know, it's interesting this band is completely assembled through uh, Craigslist. Yes. You know, I, Get out of here. Joe put an ad out for, for musicians. I, I, you know, got the the ad from a friend of mine said, hey, check this band out. I hadn't played in, you know, about three or four years. I, I, I drummed for a long time. Uh, started when I was about 10. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I started like marching bands and things like that and I started playing in rock bands in my 20s and then I took some time off to start a new career and uh, I wanted to get back into drumming again and you know my friend said hey check this ad out and I listened to the music and I thought it was great. Uh, I called him up or sent him an email and you know a couple of, a couple of weeks later we were in a rehearsal studio just Joe and I and at the end of that he said hey I want you to be in the band and and we auditioned Steve the next week and we started as the White Stripes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we became Rush after that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And now, uh, now we're, I don't know what we are, we're, we're just we're complete. We're the biggest band in peak skill right now. They just don't know it yet. I Not think yet. everybody knows it. I think everybody knows it. <laughs> so Geller, how did you come to find these guys? I, I find it amazing that you did all of this on Craigslist. That's, that's how it happened. I, I come off five years on the road mm -hmm. and I was done I just needed to, to sleep for for a Good month 10 years <laughs> yeah yeah and so I was just looking for something to occupy my time mm -hmm. basically and so I answered this ad mm -hmm. and I didn't know I was gonna fall in love with it mm -hmm. so it just from the the first rehearsal it was like oh this is really good I'm screwed <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do now <laughs> So, so what were you doing uh, prior to meeting up with these guys? Uh, well, I was in a, a blues band, a, a traveling blues band. Uh, before that, I was with, uh, you may remember, the Monkees. I was with Davy Jones of the Monkees for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I've just worked with a lot of guys. I've worked with uh, Mick Taylor of the Stones. Mm -hmm. um, I worked with Taylor Dane a little bit. Um, uh, Buckethead, the, the, the metal guy. And mm -hmm. uh, just a, a whole 
list of people I've gotten. Actually, I, I worked with uh, Pete Best, who was the original drummer of the Beatles, okay. which to a guy of, of my generation, I'm the old guy in the band, mm -hmm. a guy of my generation was like mecca. It was like the greatest mm -hmm. thing that could happen. So. So very nice. So then all the material for Ebb and Flow had already been written and produced in the studio. So That's tell right. me a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, I started working on the album about five years ago and mm -hmm. um, wanted to, I was recording everything at home, very similar to Kevin uh, Winterfield. I was doing a lot of stuff from, uh, from home, so I was doing the, the home recording thing. And, um, and I, 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 I thought that the songs could sound better in a, in a real studio, mm -hmm. going to more professional uh, producers and musicians that can just enhance everything that I had written from home. Uh, so I started recording the album uh, with uh, a local uh, musician, Fred Gillen Jr., who you may have heard of. Yeah, and, um, he was actually one of my first guests on this show. He's, he's uh, awesome. He's he he's just the poster child of peak skill music. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he's been doing it for a while. You right. Know? He's, he's one way or another, it's like six, like three or you know, a couple degrees Absolutely. of separation. Yeah, he's kind of like Kevin Bacon, right? Exactly, um, the Kevin Bacon guy. Hey Fred, I think I just called you Kevin Bacon. Um, <laughs> but we, so we started with one song, which was Love Can Rule the World. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the first song we recorded for the album. It's a home, my heart. Come through my heart. It's taking me that I can see. Are you And um, I, I took those recordings, uh, which we had 
brought in a few musicians locally, Eric Puente on the drums, uh, Fred played bass, Paul. and Paul Silverman, who is from the Yaya's uh, recently mm -hmm. uh, with the Yaya's, uh, he played piano on that song. So we took, I took all those files and I took it to another studio in Virginia. Uh, a buddy of mine had recommended a producer down there in Charlottesville, and so we he, he basically finished that song, and then we recorded three more songs after that. Okay. So we did four songs down there, uh, Hudson River, which is another song we performed here tonight, uh, I recorded in Virginia. So it's weird, I recorded a song about the Hudson River down in the Blue Ridge Mountains. So I yeah. need to write a song about the Blue Ridge Mountains and record up here, what do you say? <laughs> yes, do it. Um, so we did those first four songs and I wanted to record closer to home because it was just easier and you know, yeah, timing and calendars and all that. So I met uh, Kevin Hupp, who is a, a producer based out of Brewster, New York, and he and I finished the album with six songs, so we did a total of ten songs on the album. Mm -hmm. And he hired, uh, pretty much assembled a great bunch of uh, musicians. Uh, Alex Salzman, who is uh, Ace Frehley's right-hand guy, uh, he's recorded uh, on his last two albums. Um, and a bunch of other people, f ranging from Nashville musicians to local people. Mm -hmm. uh, so the album was assembled in a matter of four years and uh, released it last November. And I wanted to um, bring a band together because I was doing this. I was re really playing all these songs solo for about four or five years. And Peekskill Coffee House was my home base. In fact, they get a very big acknowledgement in the album, uh, and there's a photo of the motif of the front of the Peekskill yes. Coffee House in the album. Mm -hmm. So they were very, very generous and very kind to me for all those years, so I had to include them in the album. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the CD release party was there. Um, mm -hmm. I did have a band assembled, not these guys, but I had a couple of buddies of mine kind of fill in. Um, and I just wanted to take those songs that I started in my house and just take it out to the world. And this is what we're trying to do right now. So what um, instruments do you play other than the guitar? Um, I play guitar and I play some bass, but I don't play bass in the band. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, oh, I could never hold a candy. Well, I'm just thinking to myself, if you did all of this, I guess, in your home studio mm -hmm. and you're putting down all the tracks, it's like, right. how did you do it? I did it with, uh, I have a bass at home. I, I used uh, drum software. Uh, try to s make the drums sound as human as possible without them mm -hmm. sound like a drum machine. Um, and I just recorded everything in GarageBand. And what I thought were the final takes or tracks for those songs, um, they were really just uh, overly produced demos. Mm -hmm. and I didn't realize that at the, at the time until I started recording seriously with professional people. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, I did not, wow, wow did I not know what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it's not just so much about recording, it's, you know, you, you're, you're working with a producer who really understands the songwriting structure and, and how things should sound sonically, yeah. you know, from uh, rights and lefts and, and, and what's, what's in the forefront, what's in the background. Those are things that me as a songwriter, I don't, have, I don't think about, at least not when I'm writing a song, but mm -hmm. recording is a whole different thing. And, and it, it, it made all the difference in the world to work with someone who um, has been doing this for so many years. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, this is your first album. That's right. So are you currently working on some new material? We do have some exciting new material that we've been trying out here in the Peak Skill area. Um, we're about, I don't know, five or six songs, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe another yeah. four more we can hit a studio and, and start recording. You have a little working title? Well. well. Yeah. It's funny you should say that because <laughs> our newest song is called Empty, which we're going to, uh, we, we just debuted it last Friday at the Bayou in Mount Vernon, but we're going to play it uh, uh, at, um, at the Beale Street uh, Barbershop mm -hmm. uh, Music Festival, which is coming out uh, September 27th. But that song is called Empty, and uh, I took a really cool shot when I was in Portugal. I just recently did a family vacation there, and I took mm -hmm. this really neat shot, and I put it on Instagram, and it got a lot of great hits from people, and I said, you know what? I think that might be the next album cover. Nice. Um, so I kind of played around with the font and some other things, and I designed it at home, and I put it out on Facebook, and it, it, there was some, some, some buzz around that. So that could be the title. That could be, right now, the tentative title is Empty. Okay. Yeah. So you're doing, so right now you have about four or five songs. So what's the process for you? Because you're doing all the writing yourself, right? Right, right. Um, <clears throat> you know, I have a lot of songs that are already finished or songs that never made the cut with the first album that were just never finished or just didn't like the way it sounded or whatever. Have you always been kind of doing music or is this something that you just... I've been doing music since, um, God, I, I, since, I, I, uh, since I was a kid. <laughs> uh, I think everybody says that, but uh, I learned to play guitar when I was 13 and I was in my first band, you know, in high school. And 
uh, in my 20s. I was in uh, a couple of goth bands. So, okay. uh, you know, in the last 25, 30 years, I've been in and out of groups. Um, but this is my first solo thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I really wanted to just spread my wings and, 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 um, and write music that I think people will, like, will enjoy. So have you worked with um, some people in any, you know, the industry we may know, or? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> 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 Should have phrased that differently. I'm like, um, okay. Uh, uh, yes. But you've been playing. Steve so. Geller. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you know, I, I uh, you know, in my, in my 20s, a uh, few years ago, I um, got to play in, in, in some very excited v venues like CBGB's with, with mm -hmm. uh, some of the bands that I played in. I, I think about that. I was actually thinking about it before we were taping, how, how cool it was to play at a place like CB's at a time when music, original music, was so desired in, in the New York area. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel, um, I mean, I don't know how you guys feel, but I think cover bands really sort of take over the, the music space, um, yeah. at least in the suburbs they do, at least up here in Westchester they do, and it's refreshing. I don't find that so much, I mean, especially mm. with all of the new music that's out and everyone kind of producing their own I, stuff, I, you know? I, I think Peak Skill has, has, has a scene that's yeah. growing and that, mm. that's supporting original artists. Right. And yeah. it, it's, it's very yeah. unique and it's very special. And, and you guys should be commended for that. Right. right. For having something like that. I'm smiling as if I can take credit for the peak skill well, music scene. But I'm, I'm glad but to you hear know, it. There's, there's this, this, well, this program. Living mm -hmm. Arts in Westchester is a part of that. You know, it's... it's well, it's I'm, I'm, I, you know, I'd like to think so. I, um, I try to interview as many people and kind of put their stuff out there. Mm. Just so people can be aware of them, because I think the stuff ha you know that is happening here is really cool. Yeah, yeah. And you know, and the, the people I've met, like just you know, through association, like with Kevin, it's been nice too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, you you do perform a lot. So tell us about some of the places that you've been performing. You mentioned the Bayou over there in Mount Vernon. That's right. Uh, the uh, music fest, the Beale Street Music Festival is coming up mm -hmm. um, on the twenty seventh. We're going to be uh, the headlining band. We're going to be playing at nine o'clock, okay. and uh, music starts at two. And there's going to be a lot of great artists that day. And Mark Sinis, who is the the brainchild behind this, I, I believe it's their second annual. Um, yeah, and no, I went to the one pr uh, last, last year. year. It was nice. Yeah. It was really nice. Nice weather, great music, and his band is awesome too. Yes. Yeah. And I forget I the name of it, but it's like rockabilly. Yes, they're awesome, and I think they're going to have uh, an Elvis impersonator <laughs> with them. Uh, which they won't be, let that man rest, fun. right? <laughs> not, not anytime soon. I love your logo, by the way. I love just you. the you know what's on the album, and I loved your you know your sound. And I had an opportunity, I guess, because I drive a lot, to just listen to a lot of your music, and I, I really liked it a lot. Thank you very much. Thank I you. I really very liked much. it a lot. I know that like a lot of work goes into it, mm. and I don't even listen to the radio to be honest with you, and I haven't for quite some time. And that's why you'll, on any given day, you'll hear me listen to Earth, Wind & Fire or something crazy. And it's like, people are like, Jackie, <laughs> when's the last time you purchased some music or, you know, something? Or get like an iPod in here. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, you know, what, you know, what can I tell you? So yeah, there's a lot of ways to, 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 to hear music and download music and stream music. and You have uh, to put it in kind of in front of me for me to, come, you know, be hip to it. Right, right. Yeah, because yeah. I'm kind of closed off that way. I'm not, like, going and buying music out in the stores, I mean, is that, you know, or downloading a lot of stuff on iTunes. Yeah. I'm more of uh, just a pop a CD or, you know, my iTunes in the car. You know, I don't listen to radio as much. Yeah. Um, Isn't that odd, right, how radio has become, like, what you can really hear is the classics. Maybe on WHUD you get some good stuff. Yeah, yeah. 107.1. Yeah. The peak. background. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but there are. You're right. I mean, we we've been featuring some of the radio stations like HUD. You mentioned mm -hmm. we, you know, we, I did an interview with them, and um, every Saturday, I think it's WCRS or something. I'm messing up the call letters, but it's a it's a college station just outside of Hartford, Connecticut, mm -hmm. that plays our music every Saturday. Uh, DJ Tree, uh, <laughs> who supports us, she plays our stuff all the time. Um, so we're just uh, working it, getting it out there. Um, you know, we, we, we started in Peekskill, and we just want to grow and take this out as far as we can. Well, it looks like you're doing, you know, you're off to a fantastic start. Thank you. And I think uh, in some part that's due to what you do for a living. Yes. You know, you're a publicist. That's Why don't right. you tell us a little bit about that? I'm a PR dude, and uh, I'm a freelancer, and I've been doing PR for about 18 years. Uh, Ten of those years I do it from home, mm -hmm. uh, which is great because uh, not only is it great to work from home, but it also allows me to do this. Mm -hmm. um, I think if I was still working for the man uh, in some corporate setting, uh, 
I, I wouldn't have the mental capacity or the bandwidth to even think about doing something as crazy as starting a rock band. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a time that you had at home to like kind of yeah. became creative it, in that way? It, it does, you know, all that mental busyness, you know, mm -hmm. from being in an office and being distracted and all that other stuff, you know, it, 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 kind of really, you. it really did. And, you know, all these ideas like Ebb and Flow started that way, you know, mm -hmm. just all these songs were coming out. Um, and um, it, yeah, so it, and it's beautiful. I could be working and doing my regular day gig, and I'll have an idea, and I'll just stop that for a second, turn on my, you know, other computer, and start tinkering with that for ten or fifteen minutes, and then I'll put that aside and get to it later and go back to work. I couldn't do that if I worked in a. It's true. Know, for a, for a, uh, any any company in the city, you know. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to the <laughs> conference room right now so to work on a song. I'll be right back. Does everybody have that kind of luxury? Are you kind of all professional? Um, yeah, I'm a full timer. Are you a full-time musician as well? No. Uh, I, I work as a, a headhunter. And, oh, okay. Uh, he hunts heads. I hunt heads. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, pretty soon I'll start shrinking them. Keep it <laughs> clean. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, that was the new career that I, that, I, that I started about four years ago and mm -hmm. took time away from music, so, which I was trying to do uh, full-time. Full time. Yeah. You know, I was uh, doing a lot of uh, teaching and a lot of performing and a lot of recording and, um, you know, playing with bands that you hoped would would hit it and, and just right. you know getting real close and not quite making it and then finally deciding I, I need a full-time job mm -hmm. and so for the last four years I've been doing that and coming back to music has been really a blessing because it's allowed me to decompress from from those you know those corporate uh, commuting to the city moments and you yeah. get to play with these guys and I'm, I'm the baby of the group I'm the youngster <laughs> everybody else has such incredible experience that and really, it's, it's teaching me uh, mm -hmm. a lot more than, than I thought originally that it would. So it's really been, uh, it's really been an excellent experience for me. Um, so tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing moving forward. Like what you'd like to do with the band. We want to play Vegas. Really? <laughs> you want to be a Vegas house Why? band? Why? Why not? We can do that. Hey, that's not yeah, a bad sure. idea. Call, you call me <laughs> when you get there. Uh, <laughs> we want to focus on uh, Playing the city a lot more, uh, doing a lot more gigs that are out of state, maybe doing some traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like 2015 to be a busier year uh, with playing out of state. Uh, okay. More and uh, just. So you're working with an agent or someone that can make that happen for you? We just actually just met someone recently who uh, is going to start booking some shows for us. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So it was one of those things where about a week ago I got off the phone after like you know, the 20th phone call to the same guy at the same <laughs> club, and I'm not going to mention the club or the guy. Tell me, tell me. And I just said, you know, it would be so much easier if someone could do this for me. And two days later, a uh, buddy of Steve's, and uh, mm -hmm. I said, do you think you could help us out? And he goes, yeah, I'll ask him. And, you know, we had a little meeting at the Bayou last week, and he's, uh, he's on it. So we'll see. We'll see. So what kind of place is the Bayou? The so Bayou is a restaurant uh, in Mount Vernon on Gramerton Avenue. Uh, mm -hmm. on the northern side, so uh, sort of like on the Fleetwood uh, border, and it's like Cajun food, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, New Orleans themed. Yeah. Oh, okay. And it's bar, yeah. and then they have live entertainment on weekends. Yeah. So we can catch you at the Beale Street um, Outdoor Festival, which I don't think, you know, this may be airing, you know, prior to that or mm -hmm. not, but um, you're kind of the house band for the Peak Skill Coffee Shop. Yeah, we have a monthly residency there, and uh, you know all of our shows are posted on our website, which is uh, www.joederays.com. Okay, and one more time for those people. <laughs> joederays.com. Ah, there we go. Okay, that's, terrific. That's uh, J-O-E-D-U-R-A-E-S.com. Okay, well, I want to thank you guys for coming. I've had a great time getting to know you a little bit, hearing your music. I was already a fan before you got thank here, you. and now Thanks. I'm really a fan. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll be running into you in our little small town, sh you know, soon. Cool. I'm sure. Great. And for our Living Arts audience, I want to thank you for tuning in. As always, it's been a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed this. Like us on Facebook, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we will be back. Peace. Yeah! <laughs>